Green screens are one of the most powerful filming tools and when done right, it'll make your production value look big budget. But if done incorrectly, it'll come off as novice and your film won't be taken as seriously. But you're gonna do it right and I'm gonna show you how to achieve good chroma keying and compositing all within Premiere Pro. Jumping to Premiere, I have three clips here of a wrestling match. This is taken from an ad we created for the launch of Cinema Grade for Premiere on Windows. We had a super fun time on this. We dressed up these brothers in singlets that I found on Amazon and we shot this in my garage against a cloth green screen. If you wanna check out the ad, I'll include a link for it in the card above. And if you wanna get your hands on this footage that was captured with an Ari Alexa, I'll have some details on how you can get it at the end of the video. So we have this green screen, but how do we comp it out so we can put in a different background? To remove green screen in Premiere Pro, we'll go to the effects panel, video effects, keying, and apply the ultra key effect to the first clip. We'll use the color picker to tell Premiere what color we want to key out. We'll click on the green screen always nearest to our talent. Now, right off the bat, it does a decent job removing the green screen, but there are other areas where there are ripples and shadows in the green screen, as well as we're still seeing green edges. So to start addressing that, here in the settings menu, we can choose to stay in the default mode, go for relaxed, which is basically a less powerful key, go for aggressive, which definitely works better with our footage, or choose custom and dial in all the settings manually. Let's leave it at custom and we'll refine it manually. It's very difficult to judge a key with just a black background. That's why on the output menu, we can change the view to alpha channel, which shows the transparent areas as black and everything else as white. We can now see the key is not as perfect as it seems. If we go to the color channel view, it replaces the background with gray, again, letting us see all the green ripples and edges that we need to get rid of. I prefer the alpha channel view, so let's select it. Then we'll go from setting to setting, moving the sliders all the way to the left and right to see how they affect the key until we arrive at what works best. Now, we won't be worrying about the edges at this stage, just the overall mat. You can see the transparency value works fine at 50. We don't need to recover any highlights, so let's bring that slider down to zero. We do, however, want to recover some shadows that are showing as transparent, so we'll bring it up to 75. The tolerance needs to go up too because it's helping us clean up the mat a little bit more and the same with the pedestal. We're also not gonna worry about everything that's outside the green screen as we'll get rid of those areas later with a garbage mat. Right now, our key is looking good except for this area over to the right and some small slightly transparent areas in our characters here and here. But we can refine that with the next set of tools, the mat cleanup. Choker will leave it zero because although it helps clean up the background, it does eat up all the detail in the edges of our characters. We do have harsh edges, so we'll bring the soften amount up. Contrast will help push the half transparent areas towards pure white and black. If needed, we can change the midpoint for contrast, but in this case, it's not necessary. Now let's change the output to composite. Before jumping into the next set of tools, the spill suppression, let's address the garbage mat. That is, we wanna take care of everything that's outside of the green screen that we don't wanna be a part of the final composite. I'll use the opacity tool to draw a mask around our characters, leaving all the C-stands out. That looks much better. Now I can position our fake background below the clips and position and resize it in such a way that makes sense with the perspective of our footage. Now, just as a quick aside, the background you choose will make a big difference in whether or not this looks realistic. I mean, I spent hours searching for the right background plate on stock image and stock footage websites until I found something with the right lighting, focal length, perspective, and angle to fit with our talent. So just make sure to try a bunch of different background plates to make sure it looks realistic and ask for opinions from others, okay? With this in place, it's much easier to notice the remaining green screen in the edges. Now this is where the spill suppression tools will deal with the green tones that remain inside the mat by desaturating and replacing them with the opposite hue, in this case, red. The green contamination will most likely be found in edges, reflective surfaces, and tricky areas like the hair. By default, spill suppression is already desaturating these areas a bit, so there's no need to make it stronger. 
For the range, I'll bring it up so the spill suppression affects more of the image. Now what's happening here is this is tinting the image towards red, but we can bring down the effect with the spill slider. Finally, let's bring the luma up to brighten those edges slightly. Next comes the color correction section in case we want to compensate for changes in saturation, hue, and luminance that the key effect might have had on our footage. But we won't touch those options yet because we'll address those issues later on. First, let's copy the clip we've been working on and paste its attributes to the other clips including opacity and the ultra key effect. Then I'll select all the clips including the background plate and nest them. Although the main key is done, we need color correction and grading to help match the footage with the background. So for that, I'll apply Cinema Grade to the nested clip and open it. We'll quickly perform exposure, color temp, and saturation adjustments with a point and click grading in the viewer. And everything we do here, we can see over in the inspector on the right. All we're doing here is simply pointing at the areas that we want to change, and then clicking and dragging up or down, and the software automatically knows if we're pointing at the shadows, midtones, or highlights. Once done with the base correction, we'll jump to the final grading page, go to the look selection panel, and choose a look. Let's go with the three strip color preset. It's too strong at first, so we'll bring the mix value down. We'll then perform some additional color adjustments right within the viewer. And again, we can see our color changes over here in the panel on the right. If you ask me, this is looking great, so let's hit apply and go back to Premiere. As you can see, the color grading is what finally helps sell the shot. It's making our footage really match with the background. But there's still a few other things we can do to help sell the shot even further. So let's go into the nested clip and create some depth to the shot by blurring the background plate with the Gaussian blur effect to make it seem further in the background. We'll bring it up to 8. Then we'll mask the effect so it affects only this portion of the shot that is farthest away from the camera. And let's not forget to feather the mask. There, that looks more realistic. Then let's do the same with the foreground plate with the Dunlap Brothers. To do that, we'll create an adjustment layer and position it over top of the foreground clips so we can apply the same effect to all of them. We'll add a Gaussian Blur effect, bring it up to 16, and draw a mask for the area of the image that is closest to the camera. It's a subtle effect, but it does create that illusion of depth and focuses our attention on the Dunlaps. Then on the same adjustment layer, we'll add the Lumetri color effect and draw a mask around the bottom left corner of the image. Then bring the shadows down. We're darkening the area that is further away from the windows, which helps with the illusion of depth and helps integrate all the elements. As a final touch, let's jump back to the main sequence and reframe the image. When we shot this, we were in a tight space, so we had to use a wide angle lens. But we can narrow the shot in post by scaling it. Then let's animate the position and rotation with keyframes to make this look like a handheld shot instead of a static shot that was locked down on a tripod. All of this to help sell the illusion. Let's hit the play button. And here is the before and after. That is how you can make movie magic by removing a green screen in Premiere Pro. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you want to practice removing green screen in Premiere, you can download the footage from a link that I'll include in the description below. I challenge you to see if you can get the same or even better results and share with us your results in the comments. If you're interested in the point and click grading that you saw here and you're blown away by the results, then check out the Cinema Grade plugin for Premiere Pro. It's designed for content creators and filmmakers who don't want to specialize in color but still get the same professional looking results. You're able to do this by bypassing 20-year-old controls with on-screen color grading, Lightroom style controls, false color mode for getting the correct exposure, easy shot matching, real-time previews of LUTs, and support for the X-Rite color checker chart for doing automatic corrections. 
You'll see a link for Cinema Grade in the description below, and you can get 20% off for a limited time with discount code YouTube20. So check it out. I hope this video was helpful, and for more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to get notified of our next one. I'll see you in the next video. Let's make the grade.